Hello, Daisy in Creedmoor, North Carolina. See more better with ChristianEyewear.com. But call me Mo, Mo Better, because I'm have you seen Mo Better, looking Mo Better, and show everyone else how I bring God's love and feeling back to glasses when I cut my newest design. This is the, the Christian Eyewear, the Philippians 413 in color purple with the gold crosses. You can get a purple with gold or purple with silver crosses. And of course, they come with a polarized magnetic clip-on that snaps right onto the front of the frame. And before I begin, I just want to give a couple shout-outs. Actually, to you, the viewer, if you like what you're seeing, please share this video on any social media platforms that you use. It'll help spread, spread the loving gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to those who would love to see something like this that has never been seen before. The only openly outwardly displaying Christian cross on the side of a frame. And I also want to give a special shout out to Brenda at Zeiss Lenses. She is uh, the, the person who answers, one of many wonderful people who answers the phone when I call to order lenses from Zeiss in the lab and Hebron, Kentucky, and she puts up with me my bad jokes. Yeah, you guys know them in my videos. She has to hear them in real time <laughs> every day, and you're only as good as your support network, and every day when I call up to place orders, she, amongst others, is wonderful. Brenda's a little bit better than everyone else now that I've made everyone else there angry, but I just seem to have a uh, a rapport with her just because I happen to get her more often when I call and she answers uh, during the daytime when I place my orders but we're in the middle I'd like to say middle I like to say the end of this coronavirus scare but she's been there through the thick and thick of it to make sure everything gets ordered and shipped again I love what they do for me at Zeiss those guys are great I'm wearing them myself but enough of that. Daisy wants to see. She bought these things sight unseen a couple weeks ago when I told her they were coming out. She said, give me the purple and gold. I told her the color choices and I said, okay, I'll do it. So let me pop out the original demo lenses so she can start seeing. We'll get these on Daisy so she can rock these things. I'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker. First, I want to assign a number to it. You are Secret Agent 2881. So when Daisy retires in Hawaii or wherever she wants to do, she can email me a copy of her new prescription. And with this barcode, I can send lenses right to her home wherever she is living. Years from now, should she ever need new lenses for this frame. A little stylus is going to pop up, go around, trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left side. Here at ChristianEyewear.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy any genuine, authentic Christian eyewear or any other frame that I offer and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or unused health savings account flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase. Now, you'll get the full reimbursement on your health savings account but I'm considered out of network. I do not take any insurances. So you will get uh, what's known as your out of network reimbursement when you submit the itemized receipt that I will provide to you. Now that is the shape of the lens that we'll be cutting. There's the clear version. Let's go ahead and move on to the next screen. It's gonna ask me to enter the coordinates. Just like the crosshairs of a scope, I measure vertically and horizontally. The horizontal measurement known as the pupillary distance, the PD is 30.5. The computer starts at 32.5, so I'm going to tap the minus button a few times till we get to 30.5. I want to raise now do the vertical and raise the optical center height up to 23. This blue cross is the geometric center of the frame. Your eye is just above that in inset. The orange crosshairs are going to sit directly in front of your pupil. Now, the great thing about Zeiss is, is they document everything. They've got the prescription on the lens packet. It tells you what it's getting. This is the right lens. In fact, let me go ahead and highlight this. It is the right lens. These are the Zeiss Progressive Light D, which is a digital freeform progressive lens. It says 1.59, which is the refractive index of polycarbonate. Photofusion Blue. That's right, your lens is going to turn blue when I activate them. The DuraVision Chrome and your prescription, which reads plus 250 minus 1 at 75, plus 250 minus 1 at 75. So we do that, and the bifocal strength, the progressive add power is 
plus 250. So let me take everything out of the original packaging, place the lens onto the platform. Now this is known as a block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got them here. The black side is the sticky side. We're going to stick this onto the first block. Do the same thing now for the second one. Whoa, whoa, it's still alive. Look, it's trying to get away from me. Why me? Why me? It was your time. <laughs> By the way, I take my my work I I take my work very seriously and my religion very seriously. I just don't take myself seriously. I play around. It's that old saying, if you find something you love to do, you'll never have to work another day in your life, and that is true. So that silver button on the back is a magnet. It's going to place it, I'm going to place it and attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. That's the first job. It's going to attach itself to a second time over here. But I need to change the layout screen from single vision to progressive. Those dots tells me how everything is oriented in there. And I'm going to hit that button. The arm's going to come down, place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right which I can identify with, which for the rest of this show, this performance, will be known as the left lens. So, take the lens out, pull the paper away to make the black side sticky, line up the magnet there in the arm. Now again, let's go ahead and highlight that. You're going to be receiving the manufacturer's original packaging, so you know what you're getting. Again, this is the left lens, the Zeiss Photograph Progressive Light D. Polycarbonate Photofusion Blue, your power with DuraVision Chrome Anti-Glare, your power is plus 3, minus 1 at 95, plus 250 add power. And if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> oh, it's a bad joke, but you'll be telling it tomorrow and taking credit for it. So, same pupillary distance, having said that, let me look. Yes, same pupillary distance, same optical center height. So get everything laid out as such. I get quiet when I do this. I have to concentrate. I can't run my mouth and lay out at the same time. Hit that button. Okay, now I can run my mouth. So this is the blocker. This is the tracer. This is what is known as the edger. This is what's going to edge your lenses down from this size to this size. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home and you will need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. The actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel that's gonna act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center is gonna put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Let me wake up the computer. This is job ID number 28881, 2881, or as I like to say, installment 2881 of my 330 million volume series of making a pair of glasses for everyone in America. Now, spoiler alert, stay tuned for episode number 330 million because something wacky is going to happen. I promise you that. Now, these are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that material, but we're sticking with polycarbonate. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen in this frame. That's just a default setting for polycarb that I have to deselect, unselect, not pick it every time I <laughs> do that. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front. What am I grabbing that for? The front convex surface of the lens. But I am going to place one on the rear concave surface of the lens. And I'll explain why in just a moment. But now the magnet's going to do its job a second time. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Hit the green start button, the door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the right side of the frame. And you can see this is ground tracing the shape of the right lens, and then the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once, is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing of which I will go out on a limb before that I will go out on a branch on a twig on the leaf the leaf stem and say you will have no edge thickness Daisy you heard it here first so the light you see flickering in the background is water that's there to catch the optical sawdust also known as schwarf 
as it comes off the cutting wheel, polycarbonate lenses cut dry, meaning that no water sprays onto the lens while it is cutting. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that have to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure. No, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Unlike the plastic high-index plastic and Trivex, where water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle, water will spray onto your lenses, but only for the last 20 seconds to wash away the optical debris that you see beginning to form on the edge of your lenses. But as I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lens material, the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel, from flying debris. It also has 100% UVA and B protection. We know what the sun can do to your the sun's harmful rays can do to your skin. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes, unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that have to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. This is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. So water has begun spraying, which reminds me I need to take a bath. No, that tells me it's in the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle. Now out comes a lever with a smaller disc, a very fine disc that's going to put the safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. But you have the Photofusion Blue, which will turn blue outside, but it also gives you 30 to 40% blue light protection. You have the DuraVision Chrome Anti-Glare, which is three treatments and one the first treatment is it reduces glare when driving at night particularly driving at night in the rain but from street lights stop lights computer screens overhead fluorescent lights and such i just opened that door with my mind you like that i can do other things with my mind i can melt ice with my mind i can i just have to stare at it for a couple hours and then it'll melt scientists have studied me in a lab melting ice they cannot figure out why I can melt it faster in the summer than in the winter. It's just one of those great mysteries in life. <laughs> so, you still have a little bit of optical. I love it when it comes off in one piece like that. Just like lint out of the dryer trap. But I'm going to get all the optical sawdust off of your lens using my thumbnail. And I cut a groove into my thumbnail. So Daisy, this is why I can't grow nice thumbnails. But once it's all off your lens, I collect it neatly and professionally into one pile on the counter and then I wipe it on the floor. <laughs> so kids, now kids remember I went to college to learn what I'm doing so I can make a mess at work. Kids if you want to grow up and make a mess you gotta stay in school. That's me nodding my head as I talk to kids to tell them to stay in school. So um, the reason why I put a safety bevel on the back of the lens is that the front of the lens that doesn't have one is not rough but I want to smooth it out as much as possible so that as I press the lens into the frame, there's a chance it will not go in the first time. I have the side I'm working on closest to me, so I'm gonna tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs. I press down at the nose and it snaps right in. But if I had had any rough edges on the lens, as I pressed in, it could actually scratch or mar the finish of the frame and I do not want to cause any unnecessary blemishes. So that's why I take extra precautions by the way, have I mentioned that I went to college for this? I passed the state board exam. I've been a licensed optician for 21 years. I've personally cut tens of thousands of pairs of glasses for everyone in my community, and now I'm offering them online. So you want a perfectionist like me cutting your lenses. You probably want one that has better jokes, but hey, you gotta take what you can get. So I'm gonna pop the block off, use my Recycle this, but first I have to dry it off using my hand approved drying method. Throw that back in the bin. Add to my sticker collection. And now, oops, the dots have come off. But I can go ahead and start cutting the left lens. Flip that over to L. Place the magnet into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby, the Chuckarama, or today I'm calling it the Daisy. Hit the green start button. The door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens will be traced by two white styluses again, making sure it's large enough to go into the left side of the frame. And you can see as it's tracing the shape of the left side. Just like before, measuring the thickness of the lens to make sure that it's, to know where to place the bevel so you have no edge thickness. Daisy, look at it, you got nothing. You got nothing there, no edge thickness. What, I, I promised you wouldn't get any edge thickness. But, now I need to verify the lens is called final inspection but the dots i put on have worn off so 
I'm going to use my progressive identifier. They all have uh, little laser engravings into the lens. This is my Zeiss layout chart. Put everything over the boxes where that appears. Put that dot there. And again, guys, if you missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> I sneak that joke in whenever I can. So, this is what's known as final inspection. I'm going to inspect the prescription just above that dot. Put it in here. Now your prescription reads plus 250, minus one at 75. I'm gonna spin the axis wheel to 75, exactly halfway between 70 and 80. Read the power, and I am getting plus 250, exactly halfway between two and three in the black, not the minuses with a, with a, in the red, the black that has a plus sign, because you have a plus sign there. Your lens is magnified. The unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter. Spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R, starting at zero and going up in quarter increments from there. 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1. So you're on the tenth rung of a ladder. With your glasses off, everything is much far away, it's much too small, so your lens is magnified to the correct size. Now, once it's the correct size, you still have another four steps of astigmatism correction. There is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. You don't freak out when you hear that, unless they were bald yesterday. But no, but everyone freaks out over the word astigmatism. It's a fine tune knob. Uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. So we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 75. A straight line is 0 to 90 to 180. So we're going to turn just past the 45 meridian, stopping shy of the 90, and turn it to 75. Now, so you have a plus 250 curve here, a minus 1, which is even steeper here, and it's how, which is 90 degrees away. The X meridian, the Y meridian. Actually, this is the X, this is the Y. And it's how you line them up that makes everything nice and crisp. So, so let's check the second curvature of your lens. And we're at plus 150, exactly halfway between 1 and 2. How did we get there? Well, if you had $2.50 and then you let somebody borrow a dollar, you would have $1.50 left. That's where we're at, 150 in the black. Now, your left lens reads plus 3, so you need 12 steps of correction there and one step of astigmatism correction. So let's go ahead and see if the left lens fits. We're going to take that out, dry it off. I don't want it to be slippery. If this thing drops on the floor on live TV, I'm in trouble. Look, more schwarf. May the schwarf be with you, except it won't. I'm peeling it off. Now, in full disclosure, my wife hates it when I wipe these on the floor, especially when people show me. And I show them, you're like, you're going to set a bad example. So, in my wife's honor, who I love very much, I'm going to go a very far way out of my, out of my normal, I'm going to go out of my, I'm going to go put this in the trash can. Let me show you how far I have to go. Look, who has time to do that at work? You see how far I have to travel? That's why I throw it on the floor. I'm glad she loves me. <laughs> I'm glad she's a good Christian woman and can't leave and divorce me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, I tell you, my wife means the world to me. We've been together for 15 years. And it's a corny saying, but she is my soulmate. We have never had one argument in 15 years. The, uh, I think I married better than she did, but I think all men can say that. Again, so let me dry that off, add that in there. So, I told her that I was doing what I was doing. Because she was sitting next to me at church. I, all this started was at Easter services in 2019. All the women wearing either a cross on a necklace, a bracelet, earrings, men had it on their ties, the church women had it on hats and gloves. And I said, how come no one's ever put a cross on a pair of temples? So that's where this has started. It's taken me just over a year to get these made. And uh, part of the way through the process, my wife said, well, if you can put a cross on the side, can you put a pink ribbon? Because her family has been devastated by breast cancer. And so I called the manufacturer up and said, what do you guys charge me for that? And they said, nothing. You paid for the mold. We'll put whatever you want on the outside and on the inside. So this is model number Philippians 413. The ones with the pink ribbon are called Pray for the Cure. The same exact colors, because that was the least expensive way to do it, since I'm having to finance everything through my back pocket. My 
financier of one. I need to do a Kickstarter, but I don't know how to do that. So, um, but yeah, so that was my wife's idea, and you'll see that. And on that website, which will soon be up and running since I just got these frames in, I say the website is dedicated to my mother who gave me life and to my wife who filled it with meaning. And every word of that is true. So, barely can you see that black dot. But as I was saying about the anti-glare, it is three features. It reduces glare when driving at night, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights. But it also goes by the initials ARC, which stands for anti-reflective coating. So when someone's looking, it reduces reflection. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. You can see how the overhead fluorescent light, this lens does not have the anti-glare. So you're getting a lot more glare and reflection on there. So they're not looking at the reflection of your glasses. If you take a selfie, you're less likely to see your phone in the lens. Or if someone takes a picture with a flash, you're less likely to see the flash lit up in the lens. Now the third feature that I like, which is the practical side, is it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating. The machine that Zeiss uses to apply the anti-glare costs well over a million dollars. It takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens. It has to go through an acid bath in between each one and dried in a sterile, what is it called, a vacuum, a dust-free, a clean room. I'll tell you, any room that I'm in is not a clean room when I'm wiping stuff on the floor. But because of the time and the expense, they put the Zeiss puts the industry's hardest scratch coating on there to protect your time and investment. So let me put this in over the black dot, finish the final part, mostly of the final inspection. There's still a couple more steps after this. Turn the axis wheel to 95, which corresponds with your astigmatism of the left eye. Let's read the power. I'm getting plus three, exactly halfway between four and three. I love these round numbers. Plus three, you still have a full diopter of astigmatism correction. The fine two knob, let's check that. Now we're back down to plus two. If you had three dollars and loaned someone a dollar, you're back down to two. Now the fine two knob for your left eye is 95. This number could be, these are the first two values are real values to, the first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere from zero to 180. So there only, there's only 20 degrees of separation in your astigmatism correction of the axis. Um, again, it could be anywhere from 0 to 180, but you only have 20 degrees of separation from you and Kevin Bacon's prescription. So the last final things, I need to measure your pupillary distance, which is 30.5 for each eye, which is a total of 112. No, wait, 61. <laughs> I mathed wrong. And then, so that's the horizontal, 61 millimeters. The vertical height that's going to sit directly in front of your pupil is 23. I'm going to turn the card around, place the PD stick against my thumb. Not the inches, let's use millimeters. And hold that there, and then we I place it on your right lens against my thumb. When we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 61 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. Now let's measure the vertical, not to the bottom of the lens, but to the middle of the plastic because again this is a v-shaped bevel and so you still have the lens going into half of the frame we're going to measure that there 23 millimeters that is cut perfectly 23 millimeters and i'll show you this because when you buy glasses online how do you know that it, they're actually being made correctly well when i do it for you i'm going to show you Again, that's what makes me a licensed professional. I'm not just a machine operator. And again, nothing against that. Once you learn how to cut lenses, but I went to school for this. I understand the physics of the optics behind your prescription and knowing what happens when anything gets moved. Now, the last part of final inspection, I'm going to clean your lenses. And as I do this, I'm going to mention that there's free shipping anywhere in the U.S. and Creedmoor, North Carolina, which is right next to my hometown, is still in the U.S. But when you get these in the mail, there is a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The so three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I take them off and set them on the counter. There is no wobble. Now, when I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. And again, because of that, because 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments for you. So, Daisy, just stop by an optical shop. I think you know of one. 
and there'll be a nice silly guy who will adjust your glasses for you but it only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly but for those of you who don't live in my backyard <laughs> metaphorically speaking um, just stop by your local place and they'll adjust it for you now again there is no wobble when I take mine off they wobble on the counter but they sit level on me and I'm wearing the black and gold today and all I did was take the Ray-Ban, the lenses out of my Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer. Gee, this looks familiar, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I wore this frame for seven years. It is so comfortable. I love it. So when I started designing, I was greatly influenced. Now, I did not put the shield on the front because some people don't like that. And this frame has a three-barrel hinge. Three barrels means that the bridge, uh, the temple, excuse me, has two barrels there and one on the frame front. So when that goes together, you put the screw. There's the three pieces. I did a seven barrel hinge. Four here on the temple, three on the front. So that, when these go together, that's how strong it is. Look, uh, I can't take it apart. That's how strong it is. But I wanted you to be able to fall asleep with these on, sit on them, step on them accidentally, and have them hold up. So let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo. All right, flip this over, press down, there is no wobble, close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do, that neither temple is askew. Now, normally I would pack these up, get them shipped, but I'm gonna do something a little differently. Before I show you how these turn dark, I want to show you the rest of the collection. Now, this frame, this shape is available in two sizes. Now, yes, I was greatly influenced by the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer. It's been said in art that when you steal from one, it's plagiarism. When you steal from many, it is your own original idea. <laughs> so, that frame is available in two sizes, a 55 and a 52. They all come in three primary colors. A black, well, the larger 55 comes in a black, a dogwood color, with the same amount of hinges, again, Christian eyewear, and the purple that you've seen. The 52 eye size, now I decided to have the largest one made into sunglasses and all I did was take the sunglass lenses out and put in clear lenses. But I realized that there's a lot of people who may want to, who are non-prescription, who don't need prescription glasses, but would love to show their faith in the Lord and would, could wear these as non-prescription sunglasses. So that's how they come. And again, this model number is John 316. This is color two dogwood. All of them, the three primary colors, black with silver or gold crosses, the dogwood with silver or gold crosses on each place. And yes, I put them on the temple tip because I just think that's cute. That's just me. But hey, you design your own frames. You can put whatever you want back there. And of course, the majestic purple that comes in silver or gold. Now, I didn't want to be too bold to put wood on some because I didn't know how bold people wanted to be. So, again, we have the the black with silver or gold. Now, these come with the polarized clip-on that you have seen. Watch this. You want to see something cool? Pop! Pop! That's how they go on. Same thing with the tortoise. You can get it with tortoise and gold or tortoise and silver. And the thing about the tortoise... You're going to have, the tortoise is the classic. It highlights the areas of your complexion that are light and dark and blends in with just about anybody. But the gold patterns are going to, vi going to be variated on every frame. So like for instance, it's gold down here by the gold cross. And it's not on this side. So every other frame, these could be anywhere. The rest, solid colors, you'll never, they're always going to be solid all over. And of course, the purple that comes in gold or silver. And I'll be coming out with more styles. I've got to recoup my money back off of this. And then I'll come out with more shapes and sizes and colors. I've already thought about doing these in a, a crystal color, a red, a blue. I actually wanted, I had someone in Texas request a camouflage color. And I said, you know what? I never would have thought about that. That's a good idea. I'm going to do these in camouflage with a black cross. So there's nothing shiny when you're out in the field. Um, and... But, okay, so that's where we're at. Three primary colors, each of them available with silver or gold. So, Daisy, I send out a selfie request in every package. I would love to have two pictures of you. One with these clear when you're indoors and then one outside showing the blue lenses. I also send out cleaning instructions not only for your frame and lenses, 
but for the premium microfiber cloth that I provide, I've got some Christian eyewear cloths coming. They're just not here yet. Timing, timing, ta ta timing is everything. <laughs> I just didn't pull it all off. It's like a Thanksgiving meal. You want everything to be ready at once. The frames came in. There was a little bit of a delay. The cases were delayed. That's okay because the frames were, but I still don't have the cloths yet. But everyone who purchases one of these, even if it takes a week before the cloths come in, I will mail you the cloth and they are beautiful. They are worth it, by the way. Worth it. Wait till you get it. And I hopefully in future videos, I'll be able to show it. It'll be sitting right here with all my videos. But Daisy wants to see what her lenses look like. Now, as I'll show you, I'm about to turn dark, these dark for you. But as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for all photochromic transition lenses to darken a little bit longer when you come back inside. 45 seconds to a minute, minute 15. Now, Daisy and everyone else, this is important. Pay attention. All photochromic transition lenses will turn dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks they're exposed to the sun. After that, they will work for years at maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs... Ooh, look at that. The purple looks funny. Um, your windshield absorbs the sun's harmful UV rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day, and that's why they don't turn dark in a car. Now, there is the Photofusion Extra Gray that will get 30 to 50% dark behind a windshield. The other thing is they're temperature sensitive, meaning they will get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, your lenses are miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. We all work much better when it cools off. And so, today is July 30th. Look at this. You want to see some color? Daisy's not afraid of color. Look at that. The purple with the blue. How sharp is that? This blue is a really new color. I love it because I love all things blue. I live in a blue city and I wear a lot of blue. Says the guy with the blue shirt on. But that looks awesome. Now, as I keep talking, these are going to get lighter and lighter. But there is the Photofusion Extra Gray that will get darker in hotter weather. It's designed for extra active people who spend extra amounts of time outside. And they also, the, these block 30 to 40 percent blue light. The extra active will block 50 to 70 percent of the harmful blue light emitted from today's electronic devices such as cell phones, tablets, computer screens, and of course the number one source of blue light on the planet, the sun. Now I can do any power lens, meaning I can do single vision lenses for millennials who only need them for distance or if you need them for reading glasses, I'm going to be doing one next week just as reading glasses. And yes, people sit outside on their porch with reading glasses or their deck or a park or the beach and they want to be able to have polarized lenses on top of their reading glasses. I can do it. I can do these as computer glasses for those of you who work outside or Zoom meetings. You just need it at this distance. Usually the reading is about 18 to 20 inches, arms bent at a right angle, almost like you're putting your hands together, like doing the church thing. And that's the reading power. The computer power is roughly fingertip reach or unlimited distance for driving, watching television. I can do the line style bifocal. When I say the line, that line here, the traditional line, I can do the no line progressive lens as you just saw from Zeiss. I can do the extra active with the any anti-glare coating. By the way, I can put anti-glare, any of the, I have a house anti-glare for single vision, but I can also do um, anti-glare in different versions of those for the line style and progressive, the extra active. Now, there's also an extra active lens that comes with a flash mirror, meaning that not only will they turn dark outside, they will turn either silver, gold, green, or blue or uh, blue or now even red when you go outside now the silver and full disclosure the silver gold green and blue are complete mirrors that if someone's looking at you outside they can actually check to see if they have any broccoli in their teeth when looking at your lenses that's how good of a mirror the red is still new technology it just looks kind of like a really bold red anti-glare on steroids is not quite a complete mirror yet. I'm sure they're working on it. Zeiss, Brenda, pass that up the chain. Let everyone know that um, they could still make a few improvements on the red mirrored lens. But look, it's only been available for a little while, I understand. So it all takes time to work out the kinks. But what else is there to say? By the way, Jesus loves you. Having said that, I just, I'm just trying to get a like. Like this video. Give me the thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a little brown eye with a gold cross in the bottom right-hand corner of the video. Click there to subscribe. 
You can click the bell icon to get notifications of future frame and lens combinations as they become available. You can email me at info at christianeyewear.com. You can follow me on Facebook as Christian Eyewear, on Instagram as Christian Eyewear, and Twitter. I jumped the gun. I think it's going to be uh, Christian Eye or I Wear Christian. I'm working on that. <laughs> I tell you, I'm, I'm not perfect, but hopefully you guys will forgive me. Um, that's the thing about Christians. But Daisy in Creedmoor, North Carolina. By the way, if you have any questions, just go to info at christianeyewear.com. You can also leave a question or comment in the comment section below, and I can answer it there. The... Daisy in Creedmoor, North Carolina, thanks for your faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Thank you for your faith in buying these sight unseen when I told her what I was going to do. She has faith in me. She has a great sense of humor. We laugh when we see each other. She had full support of me. And I tell you, I, I joke around a lot, but if I can take a serious moment, it has been so wonderful. The warm reception I've gotten from people. And you can see the love in their eyes when I describe what I'm doing. And I tell them there's going to be the Christian cross on a frame. And they realize that no one has ever done that before. There's other frames out there that make references to Jesus. But not putting the crucifix emblem on the outside of the frame in two locations. Again, you, you won't see that on women. But you'll see it on men with short hair. But for social media pictures, I just think that's cute as a button. So... That's why I put it back there, and it's not going to be seen by women, but hey, I'm, I'm not afraid to let people know that, that uh, I worship the cross. So that's why I put it in many places. Now in the future, in the future, you see the shield here. This is known as the shield. This is the backside of the rivet that holds the hinge on. I was told I can put a little cross here as the magnet that holds the polarized clip on on there. That will actually be the magnet that holds it onto the frame. So they have embedded a magnet into the frame here on the side. And that's what that clicks onto. Now the purple frame comes with a polarized brown gradient lens. The tortoise and the black come with a polarized gray with a back surface anti-glare. Which all the premium high-end companies use. Maui, Jim, Oakley... Ray-Ban polarized lenses all come with a back surface anti-glare, as do mine. But again, Daisy in Creedmoor, North Carolina, thank you so much for the purchase of the Philippians 413. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is the 52 eye size, 18 bridge, 145 temple length in purple. Again, this is Christian eyewear designed in USA by me, the guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes. Let me recap. This was designed by me. <laughs> and, uh, and of course you got the Zeiss Light D Digital Freeform Progressive Lens with the Photo Fusion Blue and DuraVision Chrome Anti-Glare. And now hopefully everyone has gotten a chance to see how I bring God's loving feeling back to glasses. Thank you.